Good evening to all. It is a great pleasure to welcome a noble personality as our chief guest, Dr. Shekhar Alangudi, in our studio. So, on behalf of our Polymer viewers, I welcome you, sir. Dr. Shekhar has been a renowned figure in the homeopathic world since more than two decades. In 1990, Dr. Shekhar founded the Swara Homeo Clinic in Mumbai. He shared his experience through seminars in more than 70 cities in India and in few countries like Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Hungary, Italy, Malaysia, Norway, Portugal, UK, Sweden, Singapore, Spain, Switzerland. He also started a Swara Homeo Gurukal. The Gurukal teaching is conducted in a setting respecting tradition to impart the fundamentals of homeopathy culture and way of living. His multifarious endeavors include Swara Charitable OPD, free medical camps and health camps, parenting and child guidance workshops, public health awareness talks, orations at different schools, corporate seminars. So nice meeting you, doctor. So like before uh, starting uh, to our interview, like just share out something about uh, Swara Homeo. Gurukul. Gurukul. Yeah. So this Swara Homeo Gurukul is something that I started way back in 2011. And the major idea was that after giving so many seminars of one day, two day seminars and all, I was always thinking, am I really implementing and doing good for the students so that they can actually accumulate all the knowledge and put it to practice. So I thought oh, one day seminar out of which the half the time is spent in lunch time and tea time and all these things. So hardly any teaching is happening. So I thought instead of that and another thing was that the cost expenditure of doing this particular thing in a hotel and a cosmopolitan city which adds up to unnecessary expenditure for the students also. So I thought why not have it in a remote area where the cost price will be cut down one and second thing is to have it on a seven day basis in uh, uh, being resident over there itself so that your full time from morning to evening you are completely soaked with the learning and sharing the ideas from different participants coming from different corners of the country. So with that idea, I started doing this thing and it really has been a flourishing thing. Why I say because now today I see those who have attended couple of times, they are really doing well in their practice. And especially those people who are coming from the remote areas where they do not get this uh, entire teaching as far as the homeopathy is concerned. Uh, and the background that they come from where there is no doctors in their family. So I thought this was the best thing and a very holy divine thing that I'm doing for the sake of those people. And that's how till now we are continuously doing it. And we do it this seven days project at one time, four times in a year. That is nearly, uh, uh, you know, for some for 28 days of the entire year, we have this complete project. And along with that is the idea of how we keep the culture also intact. Because today's world is all about mobile and you know all the ideas of that is of the Western world. So I, I did not use the buffet system for eating food and all that thing. Sit down at, uh, with in one line, everybody together, and and see the food and taste the food and you know smell the food so that it is really getting you uh, into the feeling of what am I having. Otherwise, today's world, you see, half the people are on the mobile, they don't even know what they're having, and they don't, and then the problems of stomach ailments and all that thing begin. So that was the, I incorporated studying, educating, culture, everything together under one roof. So that Gurukal, like it is actually, it means like that olden days, like how the, where they were all studying, so you have like following the same. Thing. Correct. Okay. Uh, how does the homeopathy heal a person? See, basically the idea of homeopathy is, is in a holistic medicine, you know, and every individual is a separate entity by itself. So what we try to do in our cases is to, what we call it as a case taking, that means understanding the person as a whole. And what we mean by understanding the person as a whole is every aspect of that person's makeup. That is his situations in life, his complaints that he has come with, his patterns of his lifestyle that is there, what are his fears and what are his likings, hobbies and all this. Because all these things make that individual as a separate entity by itself. And based on that is what we try to see then which is the remedy, which is the medicine that has got all these qualities from nature. And from that, we, when, we, when we come to the understanding that this is the matching thing 
the substance of nature which is supposed to be given to that person will heal that person because the basic funda of amrit is all about similia similibus current which means like cures like if that substance has got the property of causing that problem in a healthy person then that same substance will have the idea of curing the person who is sick with those particular symptoms so simple as like uh, you are doing a case study for the particular person and uh, you do the correct. treatment correct Okay. Uh, what is the major difference between the allopathy and the homeopathy? See, the idea in, in, in allopathy, the whole idea is that whatever is the diagnosis, the treatment remains the same. It is a set pattern. This is the diagnosis, this is the line of treatment. There is not, they do not change for any person to person. But for us, three people, four people, for example, coming with sinusitis or four people coming with asthma or four people coming with eczema, each one is a separate individual each one's way of looking at that particular disease is different each one's lifestyle and stress factor is different so therefore it is simply that how it is your mental physical spiritual makeup that has been there in you with the end result of this diagnosis that has come with you we have to understand the person as a holistic this thing so it is not that this person has eczema so xyz is a remedy it doesn't happen like that who is the person what is he really worried about what is his really stress about what are his what are his desires and aversions as far as food is concerned as far as his hobbies are concerned what does he like in that thing so all this collectively becomes a part and parcel of that individual coming with that particular diagnosis so it is not diagnosis based treatment it is that individual based treatment that oh, so treatment. like uh, you are trying to tell us like each individual differs from other, other uh, person, even yes. if it is the same disease also Correct. like each individual differs Correct. okay how can be one uh, can be confident about the homeopathy treatment see the idea is way back 20 30 years back nobody knew much about the concept of homeopathy as such so the, uh, the practice was based on, you know, uh, this is the, uh, the patient who is having this cold and cough and all the thing, this is the medicine to be given. So it was like homeopathy practiced in the allopathic form. But today in the last 30 years, things have changed to such an extent that now people, all the students of homeopathy and teachers of homeopathy are understanding what way is homeopathy to be practiced how it is to be understood what is the light, right line of treatment and therefore today if you go to see homeopathy has become the first choice of practice uh, of, of treatment because way back 30 years back i would see mostly old patients who resort to all the other medicines nothing works so i come for homeopathy but today the days have changed i'm seeing today even a newly born baby is being brought to the clinic and i ask them how come you come to me you didn't go to any other doctor and they tell me, no, we want to put the child on homeopathy from the day one. That is the awareness that has come up in last 20, 30 years. It has really grown tenfold more. So, like, you're trying to tell that the homeopathy treatment is for everyone. For from everyone. From the newborn baby till, like... Uh... For every one, for every gender, for any particular disease, there is no bar, no limitation to it. The idea is understand that individual at a holistic level, the treatment is done. So, like, if it's so, like, for as you said, like, it's from uh, newborn baby to the uh, old people, so it can be afforded to a, any people. It is. It can be. See, basically, affordability, non-affordability depends upon the practitioner and the area where he practices. So, if if I, if I am practicing in a slum area, I need to know the people who are there around. In what environment am I practicing? There, I cannot have a sophisticated consulting room and sophisticated uh, uh, thoughts and ideas and all that thing. So, it, the practice affordability depends upon the area in which you are practicing. Depends upon the quality of people that you are seeing. How is the environment in and around? Based on that, you have to be very, you know, um, clear to your own soul that what am I going to charge? How much will it this this people who are coming to my doorstep will be able to afford? So it is mostly dependent based on the person who is coming to my doorstep seeking for help. Okay. I need to be focusing there rather than the monetary affairs because monetary affairs, if I go to focus there, then it cannot be done. Okay. Okay, actually some examples of chronic situations which can be healed like uh, uh, wheezing, sinus, like 
I, I, I'll give you a case. Just just few days back itself, it was. I mean, a month back, it was there. A case of a chronic sinusitis was so desperate with that with the sinusitis for over 18 to 20 years, he was suffering. So I, I asked him, okay, tell me your problem. Then he said, okay, I have got this chronic sinusitis and it is really bothering me. I don't know what to do every time. It is a hindrance for me. It's like a nuisance value, so I cannot progress. And what is my age? I'm hardly in my 40s. I have to take care of my family. I have to take care of, I support my family. I said, I did not understand this. See, I'm the only earning member. So I, my whole family is dependent on me and I am suffering with this thing so I cannot take up any other jobs even though they are coming because of this problem. So further when I went on to ask him everything, he gave the clear idea about for him the whole focus was based upon being a responsible person in the family. The idea about earning and taking care of the family, the idea about looking for a job even though they are coming, this complaint is causing a problem for me, so for which I cannot grow, I cannot progress and therefore for me the feeling is of being incompetent. The feeling is for me of being uncertain about my sickness and with that I prescribed him the remedy and a month back and the, just the first follow up that was taken a couple of weeks back, so this was three weeks, in his three weeks he was so happy to give you this, this particular remark that it has really created miracles. Okay, like as when you are saying about this case study, I want to tell about myself itself. Like a, lot, a few years back, like even I had the same problem, I had a sinus wheezing, I, I was using the spray and everything. So like later then, like it was not every time whenever I, I, I had to carry that uh, spray. So it was like that uh, depression, you know, like how it will be. So like uh, when I came to know a homeopathy doctor, like he gave me a course and uh, uh, like actually it went on well, like uh, touch wood till, till now I'm not using it. But what I feel right now, because the situation changes after this COVID, every situation has been changed. So now again, I'm feeling the same thing. Like uh, I, I feel that I'm getting the same, that sinus problem, everything. Now I'm worried, like will I be uh, again, I have to use that spray because we, are, we started using uh, after this covid we started using uh, allopathy so like it has been like a no way so like what is the thing like so in that the, what situation? is needed right now is to go back to the person who had given you the medication because he or she has seen you and knows what is the problem with it and has known the remedy and everything so it, it requires something called as a follow up follow up with that person telling all your complaints and just repeating the medicine or whatever the medicine can be given so maybe eventually in couple of months again it will completely get cleared Okay. So the idea is that right this, this moment of time, even after a span of long duration, you did not get it. The call of the nature is something has gone wrong a little bit with you. Some ailments have come in or some maintaining factor that was there, the causative factor that was there. You have come across with that causative factor to trigger this complaint again. Okay. So it requires a short touch up, maybe a couple of months and thing will settle down again. Okay, so what are some good practice to stay healthy, doctor? To stay healthy, <laughs> first and foremost is to have the character of discipline. What is missing in today's world is this idea about disciplining oneself. The idea about let go. The idea about, okay, now 7 o'clock I've been called, so I can come at 7.30. So this this particular problem is the first and foremost important Time thing. management. Time management, the need of the hour. Second thing that is important is, you need to first clarify with yourself, introspect with yourself, what am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? How am I going to do? If this is clear about your ideas about what you are going to do, then you can easily get through with that thing and health stays proper. Because mostly you see people attending parties, people attending functions, people attending this thing and they have no control on the diet. And when they have no control on their diet, they simply eat, 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 eat. And the end result is all the blessed diseases that is there, they just take it with a, with a, a package like, you know. So I should know what I am going to do. I should know what I have to have, what not to have. If I am disciplining even that aspect of my food and uh, timings and everything, health is definitely going to remain. And one more factor, we are always lost in the past or in the future. Always, if I would have been done, done that thing, I would have been better off. If I would have done this thing, I would have been better off. And we miss the moment of now. Yeah. If we try to stay in the moment of now, that will be always blissful. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Like your, uh, 
all the uh, queries i think like most of the viewers like would have been resolved uh, actually like we used to study you know like health is wealth so everything is only health so like we had a good interaction like uh, nice like uh, so many things you shared it was very interesting nice meeting you doctor thank, thank you, you. Thank so you. please keep on uh, give some uh, advices frequently to our uh, viewers so it will be helpful for them definitely because the need of the r is to educate people the need of the r is to tell people what they are heading for and if that is not done we are heading in for a complete mess in general what all advice will give to the patients doctor see basically when we take the before taking the case we never advise anything because that is the time when we are not making the patient aware about anything as such it has to be completely from an unknown to knowing that individual after the case is over depending upon what is the problem for that person accordingly we advise the person the do's and don'ts of their line of treatment something that is not in the line of treatment but there is something that is missing in their lifestyle that is what we tend to advise them like your proper meals to be taken like the amount of quantity of fried products that you are having if someone really loves fried product the amount of, uh, some people do not even introduce salads in their food so i advise according and that is one part, uh, part of the advice other part of the advice is we have to need to see the uh, basic uh, you know uh, their a family income that is there accordingly also we have to think over we cannot make up a person who is an auto driver to tell them to have you know these 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 this food which is not going to be affordable for him so there we have to take care of what way we are going to advise that person so that it can be affordable also and it can be healthy also so to complete evaluation will be done for yes, the patient depending upon the person to person again so like uh, how many days with this homeopathy treatment will take to cure again how much chronic is the complaint second thing is what is his profession job in relation to the complaint like for example i had a case of asthma who was a painter and i took the case and other thing and until i started the treatment and for 6 months there was no change absolutely and i said what was happening i retook the case again again the same remedy was coming i prescribed the remedy thought that the power of the medicine was somewhat different so i looked into it again changed the power and saw there was no change again then i just casually scrolled back to his case paper format and saw his occupation was a painter so i said what are you exactly doing when you are when you are saying painter so he they, this house painting that they do they do that painting and he comes across this turpentine which they are adding into the paint and all that thing so that was one of the antidote for the line of treatment so i told him i called him back as a boss the problem with your line of treatment is that the profession in which you are at this moment of time of treatment i think that has to be something has to be done with it you can either stop that thing or you can only supervise the job that you have taken but you'll have to stay away from this thing for some period of time till you are really settled with your complaints and then after that he advised he took the advice he followed it and it was a miraculous results in next 6 to 8 months time okay. so this reason only like you are doing the case study yes. like uh, complete evaluation <clears throat> okay okay if uh, talking about the swara homeo gurukal if anyone is interested to join uh, swara homeo gurukal what is the procedure see basically to about regarding the entire swara gurukul the there is a swara gurukul number there is a hygia homeo education number where you can contact them and get the thing entire details from them and you can enroll and there is no barring for it at all you can you can feel free to ask them what all are the things done how is the safety of the place what all is the, uh, this thing that we have to bring along with us what are the things that is needed at, at that place so that because they are going to come for seven long days so they will be very good to advise them to tell them and make them feel homely where it is located it is located in in konkan belt maharashtra state konkan belt ratnagiri district and uh, sangmeshwar taluka that is the place and it's around 20 acre of land Oh, yeah, it's a complete big 20 acre land where you will not find anybody else apart from us. Oh, super! So Even if you miss your water bottle in the last workshop, you'll get the next workshop when you come. You'll get the water bottle there. So disciplined, nice. Like so, surely, like we have to attend. I think so. <laughs> Definitely, I would rather really advise 
Why? Because of few things. Not because it's our project or anything. It is not. Because for me, I have got a lot from homeopathy. What I am doing now is voluntarily giving back to homeopathy as a science. Right? So for the humanity, I am doing that thing. If I could, if I wanted, I could have just sat back in my clinic and only practice. No problem whatsoever. But the idea is culture, homeopathy, self-awareness, practice and making people aware. Okay. is what is actually the need of the hour. And that has been the burning desire to set up this Guru Guru. So nice, like surely like I would like to, like when uh, when you are sharing all these things, like I myself like feel like uh, uh, visiting. A any uh, time, any time. <laughs> so who all can attend this Aswara? Uh, see, there are two to three sets that we have got. One is purely for homeopaths as such. One is for the corporate world because they are into that rat race of their CVs and profiles and you know promotions and all that thing. So that is another set where they have their own problems. And then the, we have got something called as a retired people's uh, workshop where people are now, see what happens is throughout your life you are working. So you have got a, a deadline, morning 9 o'clock you have to go to the office, 5 o'clock you finish, you come back home by 6 o'clock. Saturdays you go for shopping with your wife, get the vegetable, get the groceries, bring it back. Sunday all the day gets spent in getting our iron clothes and everything properly. So you are not aware about your own self. Yes. And that's a vicious cycle. Once you get the retirement thing in your hand, that is the time when you start looking at yourself. Now what? And then your, all your problems start to begin. All your physical complaints are to begin because you do not have any other thoughts at all till now. You are only working, working, working. So what do I do in that project is to make them to understand what you are good at. Some people are good at writing accounts. Some people are good at painting. Some people are good at ph photography. Some people are good at something. So I tell them pick up your hobby and to cultivate that. That is the time when you are now going to enjoy for yourself. Look within. Till now you looked outside for the family, for the children, for the spouse. Now at least you have got time to look for yourself. What you want to do. And so therefore I change that perspective that I am not working now. I am hopeless. I am dependent on my son and my son this thing. So and then that really takes a big toll on their health, mental health and physical health. So I make them to feel, look for yourself. You have worked for the whole life for these people. Now you are... It's time to enjoy yourself. So pick up your hobbies, pick up your passion and enjoy it. Even for kids like they are allowed, like uh, they'll be having holidays. So during yes. those times... Even like kids, are many, are, many of the doctors' kids do come. So we have got people who can manage them. There's a big space and all that thing. There's garden and we have got some toys and all that thing kept for the children itself. So get, give them engaged, keep them engaged. Also, what I do simultaneously is, I tend to make a small sort of a competitive game for them. See children, if you don't, don't do any mischief for the next three hours when mama or dada is listening to the lecture, I am giving you this paper, do the painting and you all will get surprise gift. Okay? Surprise gift, okay? So that is what keeps them very much, you know, disciplined. Yeah. And that, with that's when children learn yeah. through this particular activity. So they also start, within a day's time, they start following that schedule, what is there for the workshop. It's nice. And actually, like, uh, when I'm talking about, like, our uh, multifarious endeavors, like, uh, it's Swara Charitable OPD, what it is. See, basically, I have got my own practice and the next room, there is a charitable clinic that is run uh, for the, this thing. The reason for starting that also was, many of them who are coming to my clinic as assistants are females. So what happens is within one or two years, three years when they are completely trained, suddenly then they have to start their own practice and then they hardly set up their own practice and then they get married. So all that thing that they have set up for that particular time and place and everything, that energy that they have put in, the time that they have put in for setting up that practice is now suddenly gone in vain. So I, I thought why not make this charitable clinic uh, exist and make them to be independent in that clinic work. Take cases, see this thing, you be responsible for your patients till the time you get fixed. Okay. Once you get fixed, then it, you can decide, you can plan. But till the time you are not settled, you are no planning. They not settled. like search for job, like they not go outside and Correct. like... Uh, they because the be problem idle. what is happening is with homeopathy most of the time is people just pass out, immediately they take in a hospital job, they become an RMO and then that, that is continued throughout their life then. 
So what have you, what have you gained by becoming a doctor? You have not done anything good for yourself. So always I thought, let me tell them this and make them aware. You are born as a doctor, as a consultant in homeopathy. See that you be a genuine good homeopath rather than going into any other field and doing nothing good for yourself. Okay, doctor. Like, uh, how frequent you conduct these free medical camps and uh, medical checkups? Uh, mostly, it is once in forty-five days or once in two months time. Where, like, in, in all places? In, in, all, like, in uh, all places. Now, even Hygie Home Clinic is also doing a lot of you know, this thing, medical camps or not. So, the two reasons for doing medical camp is one is making them aware about what their problems are. One. Second thing is that telling them, yes, I will be there for you. Don't worry about the cost expenditure and everything. I will be there for you to help you out but don't suffer with this today or tomorrow which then it becomes too bad and then it is right up till the neck that you can't do anything so it gives us the idea to pocket up where there is this place, this place how many people genuinely require treatment and because of the monetary this thing they are not ready to face that show really? so it is like psychologically supporting them one Tracing those people that they are they are having these problems and another thing is telling them I am there with you, do not worry, come, I will be definitely helping you out. And the another thing is like uh, much needed uh, uh, topic is parenting and children guidance workshop, like you are doing it frequently, yeah. so please uh, say something. See, the, the whole scenario in today's world is that the children are totally, totally getting out of discipline. The children, uh, you do not have a, suppose if, a, if both parents are working, 9 to 5 they are working, by the time they come back home, you know, they are also tired, they are also exhausted. There is no proper touch or connection with the children, what they are doing. And children do not have that particular thing that, oh, my parents are not even looking at me, not even bothered about me, not even loving me, not even caring for me. And therefore, they try to seek that love, care and affection outside. And that is the dangerous thing that is happening in today's world. So in this parenting, what I do is I allow all the parents as well as the children of that school to be there together and then tell them what is happening with both the sides balancing from the child side also and from the parent side also now for example even if you go to see many of the girl child at the age of at the 8 7 9 7 10 7 they start getting their periods and the pressure is so much high that you have got 10 7 board exams you have to compete you have to do this you have to do that so there is a struggle from outside and there is a struggle from inside there is a bodily changes hormonal changes inside and they are the victim of these two struggles and therefore, that is the time, because of the stress, we see a lot of PCOD cases. Two months, three months, no menses. Same with the boys also. They are having hormonal changes inside. Externally, they are made to force to have this, do this, do that, study this, study. You have to compete, see the other child. And parents' biggest mistake is they always compare with the other child. This PCOD, when you say about PC, sorry to interrupt you, doctor. Like this PCOD, like, so it is one of the reason, like, uh, because of this depression, like, all this one pressure. One of the reasons because of psychological it's stress. A, but, like, what generally parents, or whoever it is, they say it's a hormonal changes, like. Uh, there is something called as the PNEI axis. P is psycho neuro endocrinological immunological axis. So, when you're psychologically affected, automatically like the mind like the body or like the body like the mind and if it is like the mind like the body it is like the soul so soul mind body and soul are the trinity of life as a whole so therefore what happens is when you're psychologically pressurized you're automatically your hormones also pressurized so therefore the hormone releasing the hormone acting on the system also gets altered and these are the end effects of that altered hormonal effects okay so like uh, we all had like uh, brief explanations about everything like some uh, tips for the viewers doctor because now the summer is started it's going to like uh, be, uh, being hectic every time the summer time so like how to maintain healthy during summer see the most important thing is i would say seasonal fruits are that is the reason why seasonal fruits are advised so in summer what should be consumed maximum will be something that is seasonal fruits like watermelon, musk melon, all these things because that keeps your body, electrolyzed body, water fluid intake, everything intact. Another thing that I would advise is spicy food, avoid. Oily food, avoid, which will generate a lot of heat within you. 
so as far as possible curd rice buttermilk rice you know this type of food will be very very important because it will simply calm yourself down lot of heaty product is not generated within you and that is going to be really adding up to your coolness third important thing is lot of water intake should be there and especially if you have it in copper vessel it will be very very good because that again has good medicinal properties also and it it also gives you a lot of uh, soothing effect as far as this thing is concerned <coughs> fourth thing is see that you avoid a lot of confrontations where you are getting a lot of frictions in this this type of environment which will again add up a lot of heat within you so these are the little tips that i would give of course there's a long list of things that is to be told but these are the most commonest thing that could be first is avoid spicy hot food second thing is add a lot of curds buttermilk and rice in your food add uh, have seasonal foods like watermelon muskmelon have a lot of water intake and all that thing in that for this thing so that your body remains cool acid formation is not too much which will again burn you from within then there will be external burning internal burning which will make you really frustrated angered and spoil your mental health <laughs> okay now like uh, everywhere is a pollution doctor so whenever like whenever like we go outside like you know like we have to wear everything we have to uh, make a safety measures only we have to put a scarf helmet everything but like by following all this also like what we are getting is like hair fall dandruff so any tips basically there's no tip for it i would really ask how does it bother you how does it disturb you because this is a pollution is such a thing which you cannot avoid you cannot remain in a glass house and say okay outside world is whatever happens up i don't bother because i don't want air fall so i'll stay inside no But, like <laughs> if you want to go outside it's a pollution so what we have to i have to cover it okay to avoid from the if, if i'm going in the pollution i can i'll get a dandruff so for that i'm putting scarf everything what they say if you're putting scarf and helmet and you'll have a hair fall so what we can do see basically i'll tell you the tradition old gold golden tradition of oiling the hair has now gone you see the grandmothers would oil the hair for nearly an hour gentle massage sitting down on the floor that tradition has gone so the oil the hair doesn't have a proper nourishment one second thing is we are using so many complicated cosmetics that poor hair is feeling what should i do whether i'm soothing or whether i'm straightening or whether i'm curling i do not know i can't understand that thing so the treatment for this type of complaints is go back to the old tradition which is still the best hot oil whatever massage. arguable people can have i have no personal grudge with anything neither with cosmetology neither with this thing but the idea is our old tradition is still the best follow it at least and see how the results are and the last one is like the important thing obesity ah. so <laughs> so every, everyone needs that like <laughs> every second person is obese and they have rich food to become obese and they spend money to reduce that obesity this is the this is the uh, two sided this thing so the, there also again the intake of food is again a problem because if you have rich food if you have high calorie food if you have high fatty food obviously it is going to accumulate i don't say don't have have but then have the guts to work out also to burn that it has to be balanced intake and output has to be balanced people if they are having a sedentary life sitting and working sitting and working and on top of that having fried fruits and everything then obviously where is that going to go it is going to settle down into your system and then you have all the sort of cardiac problems you have got diabetic problems you have got all sorts of heart problems and arrhythmia and all this thing so all this is because again i should know where to draw the line i should know if i have a sedentary life what type of diet should be there i should know if my life my work style is laborious i have no problem because that is going to get burnt but if you are going to have a sedentary life and you want to have have and have then obviously it will give you one day back so in simple is like uh, self control self control <laughs> self control is very amazing. very important yes very very important and that is you have to be determined uh, yeah. determination dedication devotion the three d's are yes. very very important in our life because if that is not that i do it because i've got to attend a wedding for one month i'm doing walking 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 and i'll that and that and that and then in the wedding day you compensate for everything <laughs> and it is not going to be solved it is going to be remaining again back to the same square one 
So you, you have to have continuity in whatever you are doing for the good. So like, uh, it's nice like you shared many things doctor, like uh, we had a wonderful time. So thank you doctor.